You're making the bees do what the bees do. It's relative, what reason it's called easy is you simply take a piece of whack and use a sharp knife or a pair of scissors, unless the woman in the house decides you don't want you using your scissors, <laughs> and put a bunch of jagged edges into it. You don't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be even. If you use a sharp knife, you get two out of one piece. Put that in a hive where you've got a, the queen that you want her characteristics and her offspring. In other words, what they've been telling you today is you've got to have good breeding stock, you've got to have a lot of bees to get a decent queen. And I'm going to add one more thing to it, and I, those of us in Cobo will preach this and preach this and preach it. Feed, feed, and if you forgot what I just said, feed. If you, it used to be that feeding was optional. Now, if you really want to get yourself up and going good, feed them, especially when you're raising queens. But put that in your picked uh, the queen you've picked out that you want to do. The bees will draw it out, and then she'll lay eggs in it. And once she lays egg, eggs into it, you take it out and you simply take it over to a, a, a different, your starter um, nuke, put it in, put some other brood, some honey and some pollen and stuff like you would a normal health, a cell starter, and they will sit there and turn it into queens. They'll put right in there so they'll start drawing it out. And for some reason, bees are geometric and they like them little corners. Now, you also want to put, like, you've heard them in here, put in a blank frame so they got some place to put that extra wax. Otherwise, you're going to have a nice little chunk right here, and all those queen <coughs> cells are going to be fastened in. And it only takes, like, 24 hours. Now, you heard uh, the Honorable Dan O'Hanlon talked about the... Uh, the swarm boxes I make. Basically what my swarm boxes are is this size on the bottom that's screened, all four sides on the bottom. And then there's the equivalent of a deep nuke setting on top of that. By the time you put bees in there to raise your queens with, uh, I can get four pounds of bees in it. And that's, put them in there, put a lid on, they cannot get out, and overnight you will find out which one of those queen cells are going to actually take and which ones aren't. Now, once they get into it, the part that makes Miller Method easy is if you catch them before they start waxing everything in, those queen cells will hang down. And you can carefully cut around them and take them over to the hive that they're going, once they're capped, take them over to the hive or the nuke that they're going to be raised in push it up into a piece of drawn out comb and you're good to go. If they don't have to be, um, she doesn't have to be immersed, but you have to have uncapped brood and some bees in here. Uh, the uncapped brood keeps the bees and they will treat her, of course, you know, they don't have a queen, her pheromones will be coming through the cell walls and <laughs> They will accept her as emer when she emerges, so you got a much better chance of her being accepted. But like they told you, what the downside of this is, when the bees do, the bees do. If you got a schedule, they obviously haven't read your schedule. I don't know. My book, my bees can spell, but they cannot read. <laughs> One of the tricks we pull on people is put it. And if you've got somebody you want to have fun with, take a piece of cardboard and write out something in it and put it over a frame like this so that the queen will lay eggs only in where the letters are and they'll cap them and then you can say, see, my queen, my bees spell. <laughs> hey, get rotten like that. Now, Miller method doesn't, as you can see, doesn't take hardly anything to do. Uh, it's, most of us learned the Miller Method by accident, <laughs> and that 
pretty much, I like I said, I had a hole in one side of it, and they decided to put that into a queen cell, and as luck would have it, it was in a full 510 frame, clear on the outer wall. Now, you don't normally look for one there. Usually, in the, the center two frames are where you start looking, but like I said, you can get a fair amount of queen cells doing the Miller method, but not as many as you can with some of the other methods. So it's it's easy, it's inexpensive, it's not predictable, and well, it just you know. I guess what I'm trying to say is everybody needs to have queens, and <clears throat> I'm going to strongly suggest that you have at least one or two nukes with queens in it all the time. If something happens to one of your full-size hives and you lose a queen, if you let the bees do it, you've got what, 16 days to get the queen out, a couple of weeks for her to decide that she wants to go play around, get back in and start laying, so you lose a month. If you've got your new set, and you've got queens that you're rearing yourself, and that's most likely why you're in the class. You can go to your new, pull out the queen, put her in a cage, introduce her to the other one. You lose four days. Now, I don't know about you, but <laughs> the honey crop thing, if that happens to happen in the honey crop season, you can sit there and lose the equivalent of one medium super full of honey in those time it would take for them to get a new queen going. Now most of this in here I take questions because I know what's going on but you don't so you're going to ask me. But How many can you get off of one of those generally speaking? I know it's not okay, predictable. Okay, I cut them, <coughs> uh, let's see, out of this one I would end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, Possibly seven. So maybe seven good ones. Maybe so seven. you have to have seven nukes to put them in later well, on. See, a lot of us graft, and I do 45 at a time when I graft. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we have three colonies right now, and I want to expand, but we can't afford to buy 45 nukes, yeah. stock them to mate 45 queens. Okay. But um, tell you what I'm going to do. If you have this problem with not enough equipment, now, I sell equipment, but on the website, I want you to Google in free beehive plants, and you'll come up with several. There's one of them on... Um, Beesource.com has yeah. to build your own. Okay. Those on there, they've got all kinds of plans, and, uh, and there's one with a university that has how to make nukes, but nukes are easy. Mm -hmm. 19 and 7 eighths inches long, 9 inches wide, and however deep you want it. Right. Uh, if you use a deep nuke, it comes out of a 1 to 12. If you use a shallow nuke like that, which is 6 and 5 eighths, it comes out of a 1, uh, one by 8. So, and a 6 foot board makes one nuke. One nuke, one hive. And you probably got plenty of this laying around. I tell you what doesn't really do too good is you have to pull the wires out when you get a wire piece like that. Don't cross wire if you're going to do it, and then you've got to take something that'll cut those ten wires in there. But you can use basically anything. If you're going to wire it, use fishing line. I'm sorry. If you're going to wire it, use fishing line because you can cut through that pretty easy. Well, no, I don't wire them if you're going to you know if you're going to use it for. The Miller method, because cutting it, you got to cut the wire, and then once you get these are up, and you've taken your queen cells off and stuff, if you haven't done too much damage, stick it right back in, try it again. And the other thing, you mentioned fishing line. It's this past Thursday, I just took a a hive out of a guy's front porch. Had a craftsman style house with those big 12 inch square, eight foot tall pillars on the porch. We open one side, that whole thing, beads, come. Oh my took us two and a half hours to clean that all out. But I took some of the comb, 
cut it into pieces to fit the frames. And I take rubber bands, rubber bands <laughs> in. The bees, when they get tired of that rubber band, they'll chew it out. And it's kind of funny because I put it in, they sealed into the frame. Shoot the rubber band out, and you can see the rubber band coming out and hanging over the edge. They haven't got it all the way out yet. Oh my gosh. Is other questions here? Or we cover anything and everything. Now, what kind of wood do you use? Any special kind of wood to make that? What's this? What kind of wood do you use to make that new? Okay, this okay. just happens to be some cabinet grade plywood that I had. So, uh, pine. Pine board. So it doesn't have to be like... Pine, cedar, redwood. Poplar. Free. Scrap. Hmm? Poplar? Scrap. Ooh, you're paying out there. I've heard of people no, using no, old pallets. <laughs> And Buy cypress. A sawmill for 50 cents a board foot. But now you don't want to use it. Well, green. It's green, it's so you've got to buy it six months ahead. But right? Well, yeah. Stack it up. They'll cover it with propolis. It's, uh, I use anything and everything. Uh, I have two sets of customers. One don't mind this because you have to do a little extra step of prepping the edges, otherwise it separates. Uh -huh. uh, others, dyed wool, solid wood. That's why I make it both ways for them. But I could put these out in, oh geez, if you've got a table saw like I do, it's just really easy. You can go with a hand saw. Okay. Is there any wood you stay away from? Can you make that out of treated wood if you had spare stuff? Or make what? Can you make that out of treated wood or is there any wood you stay away yeah, from? Uh, the reason you don't want to use treated wood is, you don't, if, uh, treated wood has either arsenic or copper sulfate, and keep treated wood away from your bees because you don't want to eat arsenic or copper sulfate. And guess where it'll end up? So, you know, definitely keep that out. And then don't, if you've been told many, many times, I, I pretty well guess it, not to paint the inside. Now, my bees, they're kind of their own interior decorator, <coughs> and they flat told me to keep my hands off of decorating the inside. I have the outside, they get the inside. We work real good that way. So it doesn't mind if you paint that. I mean, they don't care. I mean, that can be painted and everything. Oh, um, you can paint. But, or don't paint it if you want. Or don't paint it. Yeah, there's no need to paint it. I've got... So uh, paint this just makes it last longer in the weather. Yeah. I'll tell you, if you... If you don't want to do a lot of work, you buy the best exterior paint you can. You put on, the way I do it, is I take a product called Minwax Sanding Sealer. And I coat that with a coat of that. That seals the pores. Give it a quick lick, then I give it a coat of a good quality primer. Once that dries, then I give it two coats of that extreme weather exterior paint. And then I only have to do them once every other year. But that, uh, once you seal the pores, you know, you're pretty good to go, so. Now that's got a lid, right? Or no lid? It gets what? Does that have a lid on it? Or yeah. It's got, okay. uh, I have to carry this stuff up from, I live <laughs> clear down south and west of Columbus. Oh, okay. So I'm going from to the light, plus I brought four customers with the stuff up today. This is all the room I had left. <laughs> yeah, there's a telescoping cover, uh, inner covers, and if you're going to raise nukes, we're getting off the subject of Miller's, but this works really good with all of them. Your inner cover, if you have a two and three quarter inch hole saw, and you drill a hole to your inner cover in the center where that little handhold is. Mm -hmm. Guess what just happens to fit there? Jar. That quart jar with a feeder on it. Uh -huh. It's 70 millimeters, and that's exactly what those jar, quart jar lids are. Uh -huh. So you can feed right through your top cover and not have to, you know, have that problem. Especially when you're doing queens because what's the cardinal rule? Feed, feed, feed. Feed, feed, and feed. 
Cardinal Rule is a well-fed queen of questionable genetics will outperform an underfed queen of a uh, proven line of genetics. Oh, that's proven. That's guaranteed cut, chip and stone. I have seen queen cells that people have put in, nukes, about yay big. And I have trouble finding the queen in a hive. She's scrawny. Then I see some that look like this. I have no trouble finding those queens. <laughs> it's like, and then towards winter time, you especially, you want fat bees. Fat bees are happy bees. Fat bees are happy beekeepers. So, if you're going to raise queens, and that's what you're here for, keep a couple so that you've always got your own replacement on hand. Always make sure that you've got plenty of food on them. And every time it does, like we've been having the torrential downpours, make sure you got feed because while the bees cannot get out and forage, they'll draw a comb. So if you keep them fed, they'll draw a comb. You can pull draw a comb off of them for your next nuke, and so forth. You can per, you know, perpetuate your system. And what's the old adage? Work smarter, not harder? Hey, let the bees do it. I have a, my coffee lady says that I have probably a half a billion women working themselves to death for me. <laughs> and I keep telling her, and I'm working on more all the time. <laughs> She's got a name for me though. Yeah. Something to do with somebody that sells women. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, would you recommend this technique for beginner queen rears, whatever? Okay, what I recommend this for is a person that doesn't like schedules, a person who's limited time, and just needs a few queens. Okay. Now, my personal choice is to do a little method. I graft up a storm, because like I say, I do like 45 at a time. And you're also trying to sell just queens. Yeah. And even that is, if you've noticed a lot of the people here have this little COBA, Central Ohio Beekeepers, we have a program where we're trying to improve the genetics for bees in the state of Ohio and stuff. So if I have extra queens and stuff, one of my friends may not have, and she's really good with the honey and not me and we can add to that bunch and we're constantly improving that gene pool and that's why we use anything and everything for methods from the miller all the way up to the doolittle and my suggestion to you if you're going out there to raise queens is to actually get in there and try each and every one of them now some people have trouble with the grafting tools and it just it takes a lot of practice. If you try grafting, don't get discouraged if your first batches are don't take, you know, a lot of them don't take. It takes a while to pick it up. It's and that's another reason a lot of people like this is because the skill level is entry. Yeah. Um, you've got the gentler systems and stuff like that or non grafting. But I figure if this started back in the 1800s and it's worked ever since. Uh, might as well keep it around for a while. And it's simple. And don't worry about when you fasten the thing if you got extra wax like I do on the top. If the bees don't like it where you put it, they'll fix it. It's a, everything people say we raise and we manage bees. That's the biggest felonious. <laughs> we don't raise or manage. What we do is we force bees to our will. And the bees don't always pay attention. <laughs> and that's why this doesn't always work. You're going to say, I got all this pretty stuff cut for you. Why don't you lay here, here, and here? Instead they'll put one here, one down the corner. You never know. If you start putting them down the corner, I worry. That's, that's swarm cells. Uh, oh. If any queen 
itself up high is Sioux procedures, which means basically they don't think the queen's performing up snuff and they're getting ready to replace her. And if you see them down low, they're getting ready to swarm. So that's one of the things to keep in mind when you go in there and look for these things. And that's why I worry when I see them low. I go in there, I'll cut them up, hurry up, take away some honey from them, and put on some empties. But you got to remember, food, 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 and good stock to start with, otherwise you're going to get some not so good stuff coming out. And I must be photogenic today, so yeah, but got cameras. Better enjoy it because uh... hey, well, you, you got a, you have a farm or something there, Jim? A farm. Yeah, you need a picture to keep the rodents away or what? No, we put this on Facebook. Oh, okay. And people send us money. Take it hey! All right. Oh, wow! That really stings, doesn't it? Wow. Hey! If they, if they throw money, I'm happy. <laughs> Speaking of which, OSUB program is in trouble. When you go back to your individual clubs, how about seeing if you can't come up with some way to help Jim Trib and his bunch keep the B program alive in the state of Ohio? Because if we lose the B program, we're losing B inspectors. If we lose B inspectors, that's dangerous for you, that's dangerous for me. Because we keep track of our hives and make sure that they've got healthy, well-fed, disease-free. What about Joe Blow down the corner that all he's worried about is making a couple of bucks off a little bit of honey? He can have fowl brood, European, all those other nasty little things, and without the bee inspection program and Dr. True's efforts, we're going to lose. We're going to lose big time. And it's not getting any easier. So, once again, and it looks like I'm going to be running out of time here. Um, I encourage you to try all the methods, starting with this, because it's the easiest and takes no, no equipment, and <clears throat> graduate as you can up to something that you're comfortable with. And you're going to hear today that every time you ask a beekeeper, you will get, you see if you ask four different beekeepers the same question, you'll get four different answers. That's incorrect. You'll get six. It's Develop what works for you. Take what I'm telling you and all these people are telling you, blend it, pick out the pieces that you like that work for you, make life easy for you with your bees, and use that. If someone tells you that's the way it has to be done, no. The bees didn't read the book either. <laughs> and I do appreciate you all coming today. It's makes us happy to see some more beekeepers and queen raisers. Do you know that Ohio used to be the bee capital of the United States? That's where root was from. Yeah. And that went on until they figured out they'd get an earlier start in the south. And then we see where that got us. So it's coming back this way. And you people are fortunate enough to be on the ground floor of it. So get your skills up, because raising queens, guess where they're going to get them when, they can't, uh, when Ohio shuts the borders to Georgia Queens? The only place to get them is here. You can't get them from Australia, and I wouldn't want to. Uh, you can't get them from Canada, they won't let them in. So you're either going to get them from California until somebody takes bees from Georgia, you get the drift here, out to California, which you're already doing by the truckloads. You take AHBs, Africanized honeybees, out to California, get them infected. Now what's going to happen? Raise your own. Mm -hmm. Start with this, graduate on it. And I think we're about done because I appreciate you stopping by.